Welcome. Welcome to worship on this very sunny, if not slightly icy, winter morning. I am glad that you are all able to make it here and make it here safe. Read, somebody just walked in the back. Could you make sure they get a bulletin, please? I'm going to invite you to have a seat, to settle in, to get cozy. And I'm going to let Jane kick off our announcements because she is all ready and eager. Ready to go. Hi, everybody. I'm Jane Blakely. I'm the treasurer for St. Paul's. And on behalf of your finance committee and the board, I'm here to share a little bit of information about the end of 2023. I'm going to take you back to the annual meeting where we set our budget for 2023. And we followed a United Church um, strategy for budget, budget presentation, which is called a narrative budget. And through that, we describe what we would like to do in the year and what we need to do in the year. And then we look at the revenue side of things and talk about where the money's going to come to pay for what we need to do and want to do. And when we adopted our budget, we adopted about a $30,000 deficit. And we said, we, the money we know is going to come in is going to need to be supplemented by roughly that amount in order to achieve our goals and meet our obligations. And you, if you've been reading the e-news throughout the fall, I've been sending it's like a little bit like a horse race, right? That revenue line was creeping up and it was overtaking that expense line and boy, boy. And then we didn't just get to the line, we crossed it, we did it. We're up there. Yay us, yay you, and thank God. It's not a huge surplus, but we, we got there. And so now what's happening is Megan, who is amazing with all of this, keeping track of the numbers and keeping us on track in really remarkable detail. She's getting everything organized. It will go off to Day Kelly, who is an audit firm that does the review on our books. They make sure that we've met all our obligations and they give us information about things we need to fix on the accounting side of things. And I keep looking at Ron when I'm saying all this because he understands that accounting side of things that every now and again grabs me by the collar and no, you can't do that. So I, I count on him a lot. Um, our other member of the finance committee is Brad. Where is he? Oh, hiding behind the organ. He's also an accounting guy. So we're in really, really good hands. I'm the loose cannon in the crowd, but they keep me under pretty good control. But I'm so proud and so grateful and so thankful for all that we've done together and all that you have done to meet that goal, to meet the obligations and to meet the vision that we have for 2023. And I'm really looking forward to 2024 and coming back to talking to you about what do we need to do? What do we wanna do? And how are we gonna make that financially viable in 2024? So thank you so, so, so much. Now the announcement that you need to hold on to, besides the joy of that, is that next week when you come to worship, don't come here. If you come here at 1030, you'll be met with a set of doors that are locked. But don't fear, because worship is not over. You just need to go down the street on Charlotte Street to St. Andrews. And you still have time to get there because worship starts at 11 next week. My understanding is the choir is going to join, or at least some of the choir is going to join with their choir for the anthem. So that's really super exciting. And that is a great way to kick off and celebrate Christian unity and hanging out with our sisters and brothers in the faith. So come to worship next week. The worship committee is looking forward to seeing you. And I will be holding you in prayers from Ontario. If you have an annual report, i.e. you're a chair of a committee, or even if you're involved in a committee, you might want to tap your chair on the shoulder and say that annual reports are due the 17th. So if you're counting, that's in a few days. So please get those into Megan so that she doesn't have to harass you because she's got enough to do finalizing things to get them to take Kelly.
This week there will be Bible study. Next week there will not. Like this coming week there'll be Bible study. The week of the 20... 20 the week before the 21st. No, no, the week of the 21st to the 28th there will not be Bible study. This week, yes. Next week, no. The one coming up. Um... Is there anyone else who has an announcement that I have missed or have not flagged? There are more in your bulletin around what's needed for pantry, brown bag, some of the other activities that are happening. Check those out. Seeing nobody jumping up with an announcement, let us center ourselves. Let us remember that we come today and gather around a light. But not just any light. We gather around a light that came into the world, a light that was God's light in the world. We light our Christ candle as a reminder of how Jesus came breaking into the darkness to shine. We light this candle that we may gather around that light even now and remember that even when the darkness tried to pull out that light, well, it's still shining today. So let us join in our interlude. I invite you to join with me in our call to worship. Let everyone who has ears listen. Ears open. We come on. From the noise of our lives, we come listening for wisdom and truth. Let everyone who has ears listen. Thank you, Lord, that brings life. Into this time, we come with open hearts and open minds. Expectations. Let us join in our opening hymn, which is a new hymn for us. <laughs> so I'm going to encourage you, if you have a God of Voices United in front of you, you might want to pull it out. Are more voices? That's the coily, spirally one. Sometimes it's easier to follow along with those words when it's a brand new song. And we're going to 174 in that hymn book. Of course, I don't have one.
and I invite you to please be seated. And let us pray. Great gardener, generous sower, we come before you this morning as we are. Sometimes we are rocky and parched. Some of us are filled with concerns and worries. Some of us eager and ready for your word. We come seeking you, your presence, your hope, your joy. Tend to us this morning, O oh Lord. Tend the soul, soil of our lives. Tend to the weeds that are growing around us. Refresh us with your water that we may grow and bloom in your name. This we pray. Amen. I'm going to invite the young and young at heart to come forward. Yes, you were very good at handing out the bulletins this morning. Thank you. All right. Yeah, Brian, would you like to open the box today? Sure, here we go. It's kind of heavy, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, sorry, other side. I handed it to you poorly. Let me turn it around for you. What's in there? A book. Let's pull that book out and see what that book says. It's a gold book. Mm -hmm. oh. Oh. That book says that it is a good news Bible. I'm going to take that from you. Now, there's something about this book. This book is, well, it's not just a book. Well, it is a Bible, but it's not just a Bible book. It's like an entire library. An entire library. Because in this book, in this book, there are prayers. And po well, there are poems. There Wait. Are. And there are. Hold on. Let me. And there are prayers. And there are pithy words of wisdom. And there is some history. And there is some wisdom. And there are some narrative stories. And there is what we call good news, which are the stories of Jesus, the gospel. Four of them. And, and then there's letters. And then the one that we're going to be hearing today is a parable. No, no, sit down, please. And in godly play, which is a way of teaching scriptures and stories, the parables on the story shelves are gold. They're come in gold boxes because they're precious. And the parables Well, sometimes they're not so easy to get into. All the other stories are put out where you can just see all of the, um, all of the pieces needed to tell the story. Like the Noah Ark story has the ark and the animals right there that you can see it. But all the parables are, are in boxes. 
And sometimes, sometimes they're hard to get into. Do you know why? Because parables are like that. Oh, well, this one inside, we're just not going to look inside. But you got to take the lid off of a parable and look at it and explore it and play with it so that it can help to tell you it's a story. The thing about parables is parables, the word parable means to throw alongside. So it tells a story that's like something else. Today's parables. Today's parables that we're going to hear are like seeds. are about seeds and growing and the kingdom of God and soil. So I'm going to invite you. Well, you grabbed her. And put it. Yeah. So we are going to hear in your Sunday school about a parable. Well, and isn't that wonderful that you get to wrestle with a parable? And isn't it wonderful that we get to wrestle with a parable? And here's the thing about parables. What we bring to them, what we listen and hear in them, sometimes it's different from each other. And that is okay, because that is God speaking. No. So let's... I know, Rita's not sitting nicely. That is true. So let's get ready to go to our... Let's get ready to go to our Sunday school by having a prayer. All right. Dear God, thank you for your Bible that's so full of all kinds of stories and different writings. Help us to listen to what it has to say for us today. Amen. All right, I'm going to invite you to go to your Sunday school. As we get ready to hear our story, let's look into what's happened since we gathered last. Since the last time we gathered, Jesus has called the rest of his disciples, and he's been teaching them. As we head into chapter 4, we hear a record of Jesus' preaching and teaching, really for the first time. Mark shows Jesus teaching to us in parables. Like I said, to the children. The Greek word for parable translates to throw alongside. It is an effort to say that this thing is like that thing over there. And so the connections are not always obvious or immediate. They can be there can be deepening levels of meaning as we wrestle with a parable. There has been some debate about how you should read parables in the New Testament. We often approach them as allegories, linking that thing is like this, and then spiraling our understanding out from there. 
However, this method of interpretation can take away from the field of interpretation, which attempts take away as this field of interpretation attempts to provide a one-to-one -one correspondence. Part of the beauty of parables is they offer possibilities beyond a simple or single takeaway meaning. Parable interpretation can and does shift with what we bring to it, our experience, our situation, our emotions. Among biblical scholars like Amy Levine, Jill Levine, there has been a serious question raised about whether the interpretation of parables in scripture that it says when when it says these words were spoken by Jesus biblical scholars like her have debated whether that is actually Jesus's words or the community's understanding the authors of that particular gospel's understanding interpreting Jesus's words for their own community and time many assert that the interpretations found in our scripture may not actually be Jesus' direct words, but the people's understanding for that time and place given to them by the Holy Spirit. One of the main arguments for this was if Jesus could have said it simply, why did he not? Part of our task as people of faith is to take the parable interpretation seriously but not limit the Holy Spirit's ability to work in and through these pieces of writing. We are encouraged to let them speak expansively, asking, what else does the story say to us today? So as we prepare to hear our parable, as we prepare to enter into it by the Holy Spirit, let us sing our sung prayer of illumination. Again, he began to reach beside the sea. Such a very loud, cr large crowd gathered around him, they got into a boat on the sea and sat there, while the whole crowd was beside the sea on the land. He began to teach them many things in parables, and in his teaching, he said to them, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Other seed fell on rocky ground, where it did not have much soil, and it sprang up quickly, since it had no depth of soil. And when the sun rose, it was scorched, and since it had no root, it withered away. Other seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no grain. Other seed fell into good soil and brought forth grain, growing up and increasing and yielding thirty and sixty and a hundredfold. 
Let anyone with ears to hear listen. When he was alone, those who were around him, along with the twelve, asked him about the parables, and he said to them, To you has been given the secret of the kingdom of God, but for those outside, everything comes in parables, in order that they may indeed look, but not perceive, and may indeed listen, but not understand, so that they may not turn again and be forgiven. And he said to them, Do you not understand this parable? And how will you understand all the parables? The sower sows the word. These are the ones on the path where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan immediately comes and takes away the word that is sown in them. And these are the ones sown on rocky ground. When they hear the word, they immediately receive it with joy, but they have no root and endure only for a while. Then when trouble, persecution arises on account of the word, immediately they fall away. And others are those sown among the thorns. These are the ones who hear the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth and the desire for other things come in and choke the word, and it yields nothing. And these are the ones sown on the good soil. They hear the word and accept it and bear fruit, 30 and 60 and a hundredfold. He said to them, is a lamp brought in to be put under the bushel basket or under the bed and not on the lampstand? For there is nothing hidden except to be disclosed, nor is anything seen secret except to come to light let anyone with ears to hear listen and he said to them pay attention pay attention to what you hear the measure you give will be the measure you get and still more will be given you for though for to those who have more will be given and from those who have nothing Even what they have will be taken away. He also said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, than the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle because the harvest has come. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Let us pray. Holy God, as we enter into this time of reflection, as we take the words from our Holy Scripture and we seek to apply them to our lives, be with us. Stir our minds and our hearts that we may hear you. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts and minds be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. It's really hard to hear all these growing parables when it's raining ice outside. (laughs) But it's been fun to kind of think back. To think back to the four years that I spent in Saskatchewan, in a community, well, communities that lived and breathed and everything, everything they did was related to the growing season. And I bring that experience to reading the parables, especially this one when we talk about seeds. Because seed, seed was an important thing, or is an important thing. Much talk amongst the men's coffee circle about what type of seed and where they're going to buy their seed and how much seed they need. Seed is important. And I think about back in the day when this parable was written. There were not multinational corporations that were producing biodiversity and bioengineered seeds that you could buy in bulk quantities. No. The seed that was planted in the harvest, or planted in the spring, was the seed that was saved from last year's harvest. It was precious, guarded, taken care of. Protecting that seed and planting it in the right spot and giving it the best chance to grow was the difference between life and possible starvation for your family. Seed is precious. And with that in mind, I wonder, I wonder just how those first readers heard Jesus' parable about that sower. Because that sower, in the very beginning of the parable, wasn't taking great care to put the seed in the soil that would get the most result. That sower was just tossing it here, there, and everywhere. On the path that people were walking, in the thorns, where there were rocks. Do you know how many years and stories I've heard about people picking rocks in fields? And yet this sower just Let's the seed fly. Hmm. If God is the sower, and the seed is the good news, What does that tell us about what it means to live and share our faith? Sometimes we try to make sure that we are doing the perfect and best thing. We hold on until we're 100% sure that something will take off and run the way we want it to. the sower, and if we are called to follow Jesus' footsteps ourselves, 
at least in this parable, we're called to spread the gospel wildly and crazily, like a man taking handfuls of seed and just throwing it out and not worrying where it lands. Taking the precious seed and letting it fly. That's challenging to do, isn't it? Sometimes it feels really awkward. Sometimes we look at what we have and say, oh, we don't have enough to just throw some here and some there and some there. And really the story continues on saying that three quarters of what we do is going to fail. I don't know whether that's comforting or disheartening. I think it depends on the day. That parable? Also, I found out something about it. While the sower was throwing the seed everywhere and three quarters of what was sown did nothing, Do you remember the yield of the stuff that grew? 30, 60, 100 fold. Can anybody guess? Can anybody guess what an expected yield was back in the day? Nobody? Close. Close. An expected yield would be between 4 and 10%. Now, bumper crops, you know, when all the conditions are good, that was only expected to be 15%. The yield of the good news, where it takes root, is said to be 30, 60, or 100 times. Double a bumper crop. I've watched farmers try to deal with bumper crops. They don't know where to store it. There are long bags of grain in the middle of fields that they hope the deer don't puncture with their antlers. Later in our reading, there's also one other piece I want us to hold on to. There was a man who wasn't called a sower. It was just said that he planted a crop, or he planted seed. He planted seed, and then he went to sleep, and he got up, and he went to sleep and got up and did that day after day. He didn't fuss or worry about all of the details about how that seed was going to grow. I'm guessing my battery is dying because it's getting crinkly. He didn't worry about how, how it was going to grow. He understood that the growth was really beyond his control. That the growth of the seeds that we plant for God are nurtured and flourish because of God. Our job, our job is to sow. To sow into this world love and care and compassion. To sow into this world hope to sow into this world our stories about God's presence in our lives and the difference that is made for us so that others may be encouraged by it. 
Too often we try to control. To control the growth of God. But God's spirit is bigger and wilder than that. that. And like my friends in Saskatchewan learn, you can get the crop specialist out to tell you exactly how much fertilizer to put on and when and where. But you never know what the yield is going to be. There are too many factors. Too much of creation being creation. To know for sure what will be reaped when the time comes. And so they faithfully plant and pray. Unfortunately, they also worry. We, as people of faith, are called to plant, to plant our experiences of God's presence in the world and to be models of God's love and care, and to sow wildly, and to not worry. For it is God who causes the growth and knows the mystery. So let us remember to follow that model of generosity and of openness, to cast far and wide, and pray. Pray to the one who knows whether a harvest will be 30, 60, or 100 times. Because that is the mystery that we do not understand. So what are you going to sow? It's an actual question. I don't expect you to answer it, but it is an actual question. What are you going to sow this week into this world? Be intentional about spreading God's love. That's all I have to say. Amen. (laughs) Let us sing our hymn of response in the bulb. There is a flower.
Let us join in our new creed. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. We are called to respond. Respond to these great gifts that God has given us of this community, of our faith, of our stories of faith that help to guide and give us encouragement. And all, our scriptures say, all of what we have comes from God. And so we respond with our time, with our skills, and with our financial resources. And all of this responding, well, that is part of worship. So let us sing together our sung benediction and blessing over the offering as they come forward this day. Wesley said that singing was praying twice. So these offerings have been well blessed. And let us pray. O oh God, the master gardener, we come with both awe and confusion at your ways. We do not understand how you work. We cannot see the full picture but we see your kingdom sprouting here and there, and we long for more. Make us ready to play our part, whatever your plan for the next step. We see the burden of creation that creation bears and the damage that is done to it. And we pray for the strength the strength of will to work towards healing of the earth, that it may be a source of life for all and continue to be a blessing. We see the communities that have been neglected, overlooked, and trampled down. And we pray for the courage to reach out to those of the world that the world deems unworthy. That they may too know themselves as beloved. We seek and see the unintended consequences, both the good and the bad of choices made generations ago. 
and we pray for the wisdom to make decisions with your future in mind, that those who come after us may enjoy the gifts that we cannot imagine yet. We see the difference between your kingdom values and the priorities of our economic and political systems. And we pray for the discernment to recognize and act accordingly, that we may live as your body on earth, reflecting and sowing your seeds and your will here as it is in heaven. We pray this day for those known to our community who need your touch and your love and an experience of your presence this day. We remember before you, Mark Fletcher and her family as they grieve the death of Dawn. We remember Brenda and Joe and Karen. We offer our prayers for Rusty as he starts his new venture of education. And for Megan as she does this last push in the busy season of pre-audit. Holy and loving God, hear those prayers for those, hear our prayers said in silence for those that are in our lives, for the joys and the sorrows that are close to our hearts this day. Holy God, as war and violence and so many things seek to uproot all that is planted, we pray to you, Master Gardener, Seed Spreader, may your seeds take root this day and grow in us and the world to bear more seeds that can be scattered further and wider. We pray for your harvest, that it may multiply in the most surprising ways. Give us light enough to take the next step, confidence enough to share your good news, and love enough to see you at work in every place and people. This we ask in the name of your word incarnate, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us join in our closing hymn, For the Fruits of All Creation. <clears throat>
now to live the calling, your calling, to be a disciple of Christ. Spread the seeds of the gospel far and wide. And once spread, let God handle the mystery of the growth from there. And as you go, know that God who created the universe with love, loves you. Christ who redeemed the world has redeemed you. And the Holy Spirit that animates and guides this world, well, it will be with you every step of the way. Amen. Amen.